Has Africa ever invaded Europe in any war? If yes, who was the leader and when was that? To settle the question, 3,400 years ago, the Phoenicians arrived in Greece and brought Europe into history and introduced writing. Two questions have uh, dazzled mankind ever since. Scientists, politicians, and historians uh, tell different stories. Who were the Phoenicians? Where did they come from? Who are their descendants today? When was Carthage founded? So let's start to answer these questions. According to Roman sources, Phoenician colonists from modern-day Lebanon, led by Dido, also known as Queen Elisa, founded Carthage around 814 before common era. Queen Elisa, also known as Alisa, was an exiled princess of the ancient Phoenician city of Tyre. And so we find that she has a sculpture, she looked like this. That's Queen Elisa. I want you to say that she is still wearing the Sheshakati and what she is wearing here is common, is hieroglyphics. So that solves the problem. Again, we show this image here from the Antonine Baths in Carthage, Hemacris, question and answers and clues start come now. The mysterious Phoenicians who founded uh, Carthage. We also have this other uh, statue here that was found in Lebanon recently because we know that they came from uh, Lebanon. This is the city that they built. This is a sarcophagus of Eshmunazo, uh, two, five, fifth century before common era. Look at what they look like. It's Phoenician king of Sidon found near Sidon in southern Lebanon. That's how they, he looked like like that. The question is, who founded Carthage? Who was Hannibal Baka? Hannibal means the, for the pleasure of Baal. So that's connect, that connects it. Let's look at the mysterious Phoenicians for a while. Was Carthage a black civilization? A lot of scholars will say no. Archaeological evidence. Let's deal with archaeological evidence. The Phoenicians were great merchants and civilizers. They were everywhere on the Mediterranean. We found their skulls almost everywhere. Pitat concluded the subject with the description of the members of the Carthaginian elite as follows. Pitat was an archaeologist. Other bones found in the Punic uh, Carthage taken to the Museum of La Vrege come from subjects discovered in particular as a focus and in all probability belong to the Carthaginian elite. The skulls are almost dolicocephalic and with a rather short face. You can also read uh, the book uh, Negro Nations and Culture by Chengat at Yop. You can also visit this website uh, liposayakama.org Carthage was a black civilization. We also have Stephen Gisell, 1864-1932, director of the Museum of Alga, said the following about Pedolon's work. Several skulls collected in the cemeteries present negroid features. And this is what is found there, what we are showing here, and this is Carthage. So we, we, we are almost on track. We have now the evidence, archaeological evidence, of who the uh, Carthaginians or Phoenicians were. So we are now leaning towards a specific race. Let's proceed to find more evidence. This is the, these are the skulls that were uh, analyzed by Pitard, uh, who was a Swiss anthropologist who examined these skulls from Carthage. The dolicephatic and the dolicephalensism on the left there, this is a supply of prognosticism, is a dolicephatic skull. Now, so you see protruding jaws like a baboon jaw, like a baboon jaw. On the right is a white skull or orthognathisms, is brass brachycephalic with a long face that goes down like that. So this is quite clear, this is obvious. We look at these images at the bottom here, now we see here, and these are some of the uh, images found in uh, Carthage. Exactly, they look, this is an Africoid, this is an Africoid, but this one is not exactly an Africoid. But we know the reasons why, cause not, it, because Carthage was a cosmopolitan city and it was the empire uh, uh, which has modeled as other cities, as a popular city. Which city has structures like this? Based on African styles, it's ancient Egypt, ancient Mero, ancient uh, Africa, right? These are ancient Africa. Of course, Greece copied from ancient Africa. It's quite clear, it's obvious. That is not debatable. Phoenician art and artifacts, we continue to see Negroid population in Carthage. This is suspected to be one of the rulers of Carthage. And these are the images of Carthage. We can see that this is almost a mulatto. This is not really an African, but it's an African, but a mulatto, but a warrior, a soldier. And this is a proper, proper Bantu. This is a proper, proper Bantu. This is also a Phoenician found in uh, Carthage along the Mediterranean, all over, across. The skulls were found all over where the Phoenicians went. Is an African. This is also an African. You can see the Rastafari. And you can always 
not as an African because somebody attacks the nose. Uh, burial customs in Carthage amulets in the form of Egyptian deities such as Ptah, Ausari, Bes, Ra, Isis and Anubis were found uh, in Carthage. And also the monkey, the hare, the crocodile, cat and falcon and still others shaped like the Egyptian Oruja board and Oracers were frequently used as pendants by Carthaginians and Carthaginians offered everything that was Egyptian. This is their board. Exactly Egyptian, no complaint, exactly African. You can see there, yeah, the various red shades found in Egypt, they are seen there. And this is their building, how they built Carthage. And this is some of their images. The nose was attacked. And there again, you can see, this is the burial. This is an African, proper African. This, and you can see, this is the Ankh. Therefore, this is ancient, ancient Carthage. And it is showing the signs that it came from uh, Africa, Southern Africa. So where did the Phoenicians come? come from where the Phoenicians and Canaanites, the ancestors of the Moors and yet Capsa and Africa as well. And where the ships of the Spanish Armada of Moorish origin. Yes, the answers should be obvious. Tracing the genealogy of the founders of Carthage and European civilizers takes them far into Africa. Here in Uganda, uh, Kenya, Democratic Republic of, of Congo, Rwanda, uh, Burundi and Tanganyika so-called Tanzania today, this is the source of the Phoenicians where they came from. The Great Lakes in Southern Africa were born are uh, the first men. From these first men came the ancient Egyptians and migrated along the Nile. From the ancient Egyptians came the Canaanites who dominated ancient uh, Northeast Africa, who were the first inhabitants of Northeast Africa in Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, all the countries. There was no Middle East then. From the Canaanites came the Phoenicians and from the Phoenicians came the Carthaginians, uh, Tunisia. So it's clear, that comes open clear now. So we have laid the foundations of who founded Carthage and that the Phoenicians were great seafarers. They traveled across the sea. So they started the expedition here and they moved across. They went, came to uh, Mombasa, Kenya. They were in Tare Dar Islam in Tanzania. They were in Sofala, Beira and went to Zimbabwe. And they come reach as base South Africa, Cape, Cape Town, Mozambique. Went to Ghana, Tema, moved across Gibraltar right into the uh, United Kingdom, uh, Gaul, Spain, Italy, back to Tunisia, right back to Alexandria and back. That's what they, they're using this ship. We have now qualified with their travel. They traveled all over. They were in Africa. So there is no debate about where they came from, who they were. It's quite clear. So we now want to look at the general who founded the uh, kingdom. So it, they introduced writing. The source of Phoenician and Western alphabet is Nubia. Nubian hieroglyphics or Egyptian hieroglyphics if you, if you want, which we see here in these pictograms. And it is quite clear that they introduced writing and in civilized Europe that way. So you can see here that the Kemetic alphabet is the first and original alphabet. Give you a, 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 some of them here. So pictograms originally originated in Africa. And then the Phoenician started to craft them. And then the Greek in 600 BCE also adopted them. In 114, the Roman modified them from modified from the Greek. The Phoenicians are the ones that transmitted them because they were travelers. We also see that the African alphabet also gave this so-called Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, African alphabet. So it's clear. So the Phoenicians also architecture had a picture and a symbol and a signature of their architecture, which we are showing here in Southern Africa. You see what they had this chevron? These are the Phoenicians. And they loved this bed, right? The two beds. And there's this African hand. You can see the African fingers are straight like a pyramid, like a pyramid. So that's the African hand, straight like a pyramid like that. And this is the bed, Zimbabwe bed. And this is the Horesu. And this is the chevron that you find along uh, Great Zimbabwe Wall as a signature for the Phoenicians. So they were also Africans. And this is their alphabet. And this is found in Tunis. And this is their symbol. And this is the snake, right? This is the snake. And also, all these are the, the Jed. So it's quite clear that Great Zimbabwe had a lot of Phoenician impact. Even the Zimbabwe bed, we were all Egyptian, we were all black people. We see like, the whole of Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. This is clear. It has been justified here and proved. So associated with Carthage were other uh, cities like, uh, empires like Numidia. And the Punic, Punic is, is for Phoenician, right? The Punic, the first, the second, and the third, those were wars. Tunisia is Carthage. This is the Mediterranean, and these are the cities that are found there. The cities of uh, uh, Tunisia, Karub, Clyphen, uh, Tunis, Saiguti, Zeguinia, and Sika, Zama, right? Zama, not Zama. Zama is actually Africa. Sisara or Sasara 
and vanga o vanga o tabrara o tabulala. Right? These are African cities, African names. So Roman Carthage at the beginning of the Second Punic War. This is Numidia. This is Mauritania. Mauritania and Spain. So we conquered and ruled Spain. There were mixed populations in uh, Carthage and uh, there were Europeans too. So this is a Phoenician bust uh, from the Phoenician period in Spain. You can see that it is in Spain. The tradition is it that the Phoenicians founded the city of Gadira or Cadiz, which is Cadiz, Gadira, Nira, Po in southwestern and 1100 uh, people common either they were africans these are africans these are phoenicians they are africans pure straightforward although the carthaginians were mixed population the carthaginian military was dominated by numidians which was a mixture of black africans nubians and berber extracts who lived among the carthaginians and who were prevalent in egypt in morocco in algeria and everywhere along the mediterranean the baraka family originated are from the celebrated Numidian warriors. So it's Baraka, right? The Phoenician Carthaginian Numidians Punic in North Africa were cosmopolitan. However, the majority of the Punic populace seems to have had African and Negroid ancestry. Whether described as Carthaginians, Phoenicians, or Punics of North Africa, they were Africans because they were in Africa and they have images of Africa. So let's look at other perspectives that is being pushed forward. Could this be the image of Hannibal? 218 before common era, Hannibal marched through the Pyrenees towards Gaul, southern France, with more than 100,000 troops and nearly 40 war elephants. He met with little resistance from local forces allied to Rome. Is it possible that if he was of European race, he was able to ride elephants and use elephants in war? Impossible. Who else in history or in Africa used the elephant for war? Has there ever been any European after or before? None. Zilch. Zero. So elephant fighting is purely a negroid uh, historical proof. And there they are, the Queen Candace, Empress of Ethiopia and General Chief of its armies waiting for Alexander the Greek. To cross the new borderline at the first cataract, Alexander, having conquered e e e Egypt, was scared to the bone and he ran away because he knew that they were great warriors. So this is our tradition. This is not a Hannibal at all. He is a fake. General Hannibal finally shows us his face. Who don't you give all you could to see the face of one of the legendary African generals who defeated Europe? Here he is after years of digging through books. Others who doubt, we don't care. There he is. There is Hannibal. You can see from the Roman coin, this is how he looked like. Was Hannibal an African? The answer and proof is obvious. Hannibal Baraka was of Nubian descent. Nubian horsemanship and animal breeding and cavalry tactics eventually contributed to later developments in Roman cavalry. Carthage was founded by the Phoenicians from Tyre who were Africans, who were black people who looked like this. This is a pharaoh. This is Hannibal. He probably looked like that. How do we know that this is Hannibal? His actual name is Chenu Pechola Baraka. They call him Hannibal today, right? He looked like that. Hannibal was a, as black as his people. Yes, Africa invaded and defeated Europe in Italy. This coinage is proof. It was probably cast around 217 before Common Era. It was founded near Lake Trasmeno in Italy, the year and place of a major victory of Hannibal against the Roman Empire. So we have proved and we have answered who Hannibal was. In, in conclusion, therefore, what we have to do and what we have to learn is to absorb the trading tactics and the mercantilism of the, our ancient ancestors, the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were the trading arm of ancient Africa as artisans, as merchants, as seafarers. They perfected networking. We must adopt this approach and this attitude. This is the ancient Phoenician proper. And this is bar. Oh, Mari. When you say Mari, it's Bali. Mari. This is the person that you're talking about. So it's in Zimbabwe. This is our culture. Their religion was African. It involved prayers, burning incense, the pouring of libation, and making offerings to the gods of animal sacrifices, foodstuffs, and precious goods. In addition, votive columns made from wood, the Asherah, or holy trees, Mutuno Sinazita, or stone abeta were placed upon sacrificial altars, we must adopt their mercantile pro prowess. Thank you very much for watching. This is Prince Rabbi LM Tumizulu. Subscribe to our uh, channel, Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. Now is our time to walk with God again. Grab your ancestry and walk with God again. Thank you. Goodbye.